In this video, we'll be going over how I use IsaacSim with Docker and ROS2 to enable my robotics research. I'd like to quickly go over some basics of NVIDIA's Omniverse platform, which enables you to run IsaacSim. Omniverse is the launcher for the IsaacSim application. So you'll download Omniverse first, and then from Omniverse, you'll launch IsaacSim. Omniverse sits on top of the PhysX Engine, OpenUSD, and RTX renderers. Isaac Sim is going to be launched from the Omniverse launcher, so you'll need that Omniverse launcher first before you're able to run Isaac Sim. On top of Isaac Sim is NVIDIA's Isaac Lab, and that's where you can do reinforcement learning and other machine learning type tasks interfacing with Isaac Sim. I'm going to skip the instructions for installing Omniverse because the documentation for that is pretty good. And I'll link a video in the description from another YouTuber who's actually done the full installation process. So he did a video about it on a Windows system. On Linux, it's a little bit easier. I'm currently using an Ubuntu 2004 system. Once you've downloaded the launcher, you'll get a window like this. When you put your email in and click login, it's going to launch a browser window where you'll enter your password and sometimes complete an additional verification step. I've had better luck with using Chrome as the default browser for this, but I think they have finally fixed the issues with Firefox, so that browser should work as well. Once you're fully logged in, you'll see a page like this, which is NVIDIA's news page. There are other tabs up here as well, and you can briefly go through those to see what's in them. But for us, we'll take a look at Exchange, and this is where all of the applications that you can launch from Omniverse exist. So you'll go here to install applications, and then eventually you'll go to Library once those applications are installed, and from Library, you'll be able to launch the applications. I'm going to search Isaac Sim here, and you'll see these two options. If you're unsure if your system meets the requirements to run Isaac Sim, I strongly recommend you download the Isaac Sim compatibility checker and give that a run through before you download Isaac Sim, since Isaac Sim is pretty uh, large and will take a while to download. Okay, so you can see here, I already have Isaac Sim installed, but you should see an install button. I recommend going with the latest release version from Isaac Sim. It's usually the most stable and the Isaac examples will be better in the most recent release. Once Isaac Sim is installed, you can see it in the library tab and you'll be able to use this uh, menu dropdown to select which release you want. So I've downloaded these three different releases at different points. I usually just run the latest version of Isaac Sim because it's generally the most stable. So I'd recommend you do that if you're just starting out. Okay, your installation for Isaac Sim may take a while depending on your system. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and do a walkthrough of the code from the Code Mechanics Git repository. This repo is public and you should be able to download it yourself. I'll put a link in the description below. Once you've cloned the repo, you'll see four files in here, a Docker file, the fastdds.xml file, teleoptwistjoy, yaml file, and the readme. Let's take a look at the readme first. So you'll see references here to the TurtleBot3 simulation and the nav2params.yaml file. TurtleBot3 uses the gazebo simulator, not Isaac Sim. So if your system can't run Isaac Sim for compatibility reasons, maybe you don't have the right GPU, you can actually try running this Docker file and using the TurtleBot3 simulator with gazebo to see if your networking works correctly. The nav2 params file comes from the nav2 ROS package, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Next, you'll see the command to build the Docker image. That's what we need in order to actually run the container. And then the command to run the Docker container once it's been built. You'll also see the docker run command down here, and I want to bring your attention to the device input. 
So this device input is a wired Xbox controller that I have hooked up to my machine. And what I'm doing here is mapping it from my host machine into the Docker container so that all of the commands to the Xbox controller will go through ROS to Isaac Sim to control the vehicle in the simulator. Now let me show you how to figure out where your Xbox controller is mapped to in your Linux system. So I have my controller plugged in and I'm going to do this command ls slash dev slash input. Notice here that I have this JS0 and JS1 in my device input directory. I've unplugged the controller now and notice that the JS1 has disappeared. So JS0 is actually allocated to something else on my machine right now. And when I plug the controller back into my machine and I run this command again, you'll see that JS1 pops back up. So that's how I know that JS1 is where my Xbox controller is mapping to. And in my Docker run command, I'll need to use JS1 instead of the default JS0 to map that into the container. Okay, the next thing to be conscientious of is this ROS domain ID. You may have another ROS enabled device on your system and that may have the domain ID of zero already. So you'll wanna choose a different ROS domain ID to make sure that those two don't conflict with each other. Inside of Isaac Sim, you'll be able to change that domain ID so that you can keep your robots from conflicting with each other. The other command in here is the docker exec command. This is gonna allow us to attach to running containers and we'll use that in this demo. If you wanna go ahead and start the TurtleBot simulation, everything should be in the container once you've built the docker image and then run the container. So all you'll need to do is cd and then dot slash start simulation and that should start the TurtleBot simulator. This is not necessary for the Isaacson portion of this, but it's a great debugging tool if you aren't sure whether your ROS issues are related to Isaacson or maybe something going on with your local machine. Try with the TurtleBot simulator and just see if that works. Also a great option if you don't have the compute necessary to run Isaacson. Down below the troubleshooting section in the readme are all the instructions for the wired Xbox controller. I'll tell you which controller I'm using in the description below. This fastdds.xml file is necessary for the IsaacSim ROS bridge. There's really good documentation for this from NVIDIA available online, so I'll link that for you. But one thing to note is that the Docker file is expecting this fastdds.xml file to be in the same directory as the Docker file. If you move this fastdds.xml file, you will need to change a line in the Docker file, and I'll show you where that is later on in the video. Okay, so the reason I started using Docker is because I wanted to use Ubuntu 2204 and my host system is 2004. So that's what got me started using Docker and now I've just realized that it's a great way to work with collaborators because all of the packages that my collaborators would need will already be in this Docker container. All they have to do is build the image and run the container and we'll all be working with the same set of package dependencies which is really helpful if you're on different machines with different hardware and different operating systems. Okay, so here we're setting some UDEV rules for the joystick. Then you'll see lots of ROS2 related setup commands. There's the TurtleBot3 environment variable setup. Then there's where we actually clone the TurtleBot simulation repository. Here's the location of that fastdds.xml that I mentioned previously. So make sure that if you move that file, you change this part of the Docker file as well, or it'll error out when you're building. The line I just deleted is actually related to RViz configurations. You can actually create an RViz configuration, put that in the same directory or somewhere you can access on your file system, and then copy that into the container as well. So if you're used to working with the same configuration in RViz, you can have that readily available in your Docker container so that when you open RViz, you can just import that config right away. I actually do that for another project I'm on. It's just not necessary for for this demo, so I've removed it from the Docker file, but I left it in the video so that if you decide you wanna do that later on, you can at least pause the video there and see the commands necessary to make that work. Okay, here are more
more ROS2 setup parameters for the Isaacson bridge. Again, this is all done for you in the Docker file. I'm just giving you a run through of what it looks like. Next, you've got all the packages related to Octomap. So if you're gonna use Octomap for occupancy mapping, all these packages will be available for you in the Docker container. And I will show you how to launch Octomap later on in the demo. Okay, let's move on to the last file in the repo. This is gonna be the teleoptwistjoy.config.yaml. These are all parameters that get pulled in to work with my Xbox controller. They're defaulted to the same things that my controller uses, but you can change these if your controller inputs have slightly different results than mine. You can also change them on the fly when you open the container. We've done all that, let's go ahead and build the Docker image. You can just copy paste this from the repo right into your terminal window, but I've typed it out for you here so you can see what I'm doing. If it's your first time building this image, it's gonna take a while. So I'm just gonna skip ahead in the video till we get to the run command. Okay, so we're running the container and we are inside of it. You, you can see I'm now at root at code mechanics. That's how I know I'm in the container. And you can see all the related files that we would expect from the ROS2 package build to the start simulation.sh if you're gonna use TurtleBot. Okay, here's another great feature of VS Code that allows you to work with Docker more easily. So this is the dev containers extension you can download in VS Code, and it will allow you to attach to running containers so that you can edit files in the container right from VS Code. So I'll click attach Visual Studio Code, It pops up this new window, and now I'm actually able to open folders inside my Docker container. So you can see my ROS2 workspace here, and I'll just show you how we can get right to these Octomap packages that I pulled in. You can just go right to the source code and edit the source code right inside this Visual Studio Code window. Hopefully at this point, IsaacSim is installed for you. Let's go ahead and launch it from the Omniverse launcher. So when you click launch, it's gonna bring up this IsaacSim app selector. Don't worry about the extra args line here, but make sure that this ROS bridge extension is ROS bridge, ROS2 underscore bridge. You wanna make sure that's set before you hit start in the app selector. Isaac Sim is going to take a while to boot up if this is your first time opening the application. And I almost always get this Isaac Sim not responding pop up. I just wait for it to go away, and it always does for me. Once Isaac Sim is loaded, you're going to see a page that looks like this. Go ahead and go to Isaac Examples, Ross 2, Isaac Ross sample scene. NVIDIA has provided this uh, ROS enabled sample for us to work with. So I'm going to show you how that works in the demo since you should be able to pretty easily replicate it. It's going to take a little while to load this. If you're curious about whether or not it's making progress, you've got these progress bars, physics tasks, and the overall progress bar on the bottom. I filmed this in two different segments, so I actually shut down my previous container and had to rerun it. So here I've just rerun the container. I'm setting up the joystick controller, and when you want to open a new tab, go ahead and control shift T to open that new tab, and then Docker exec to attach to the running container. 
This is all in the README as well, so feel free to either slow the video down or just reference the README for the commands that you'll need. Okay, I also need to run another node related to the Xbox controller, so you should see these parameters and what they're set to when you start the Teleop Twist Joy node. Let's go ahead and attach to another container. Let's go ahead and launch the Octomap server so that we can do occupancy mapping. If you wanna check that ROS is working, you can go ahead and do this ROS2 topic list. So we can see a lot of topics here, but just because we see a topic doesn't mean that there's actually messages being sent on that topic. So to check that, we're going to go ahead and do a ROS2 topic echo, and we'll check the Octomap binary topic and see if there's any data publishing on that. Okay, nothing. So something's not working here. And when we go back to Isaacson, we can see that we haven't actually started the simulation yet. So we need to go ahead and hit the play button on the left side of the screen. Now, when we do this ROS2 topic echo again, we should actually see data coming in on this Octomat binary topic. Okay, good. This is what we expect to see. So now when we ROS2 topic list again, you can see there are even more topics here that have data publishing on them. So this is a really good debugging tool that you should use if you're not seeing the ROS messages or the behavior that you expected. Let's go ahead and launch Arviz2 so that we can see the occupancy grids. I'm gonna change this fixed frame to ODOM. And then I'm gonna add another frame and I'll go to add by topic. And here I can directly select the occupancy grid for Octomap full. Okay, great. So here we can see that Octomap is working. Let me go ahead and move some windows around so that it's a little easier to see. I'm gonna start driving the robot around a little bit so you can see the occupancy grid start to fill in. Okay, so I'm driving the robot around now with my Xbox controller, and you can see that the occupancy grid is starting to fill in much more. This warehouse scene is actually quite large, so the LiDAR range isn't big enough to pick up all of the walls. So I'll drive you close to a wall so that you can see the, that whole wall being filled in as the robot approaches. So you can see it's filled in this back wall now. Whoops, no robotics demo is complete without a bloopers reel. So you can see that really messed up the occupancy grid probabilities, which is what is giving this a color map. If you're having trouble controlling the robot because it's going too quickly, remember you can always manually adjust your controller parameters inside the Docker container.
Okay, there you have it. That is how I use Isaac Sim with Docker and ROS2 to build occupancy grids and maps that my robot can plan over. If you want to see more demos like this one or you have more questions, please leave your comments below and I can answer them and help you debug as you try out this demo. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.